The vital role the transgender community played in the LGBTQ plus civil rights movement. June 28, 1969 marks the beginning of the Stonewall Uprising, a series of events between police and the LGBTQ plus protesters that stretched over six days. It is credited as the start of the of it's credited as the start not only of the LGBTQ plus civil rights in America, but worldwide. At the forefront of the riots and the early movement were transgender and nonconforming women of color, like Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, and Ms. Major Griffin Gracie. Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera were self-proclaimed vibrant drag performers and co-founders of the Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries, or STAR, to help and protect queer homeless youth and sex workers, populations in which transgender people of color were disproportionately represented. Most young LGBTQ members of today's community have little awareness of how vital the trans community's involvement is in the spark of the queer liberation. Post the Stonewall riots, in 1973, homosexuality was removed as a mental illness. By the 1990s, the American Medical Association embraced and supported healthcare and support of the trans community as normal. In January 2015, for the first time in US history, the world used the word transgender, and it was used in a State of the Union address. In the same year, the military allowed transgender Americans to serve openly. In May 2016, the Obama administration publicly supported transgender students and paved a path for new visibility. In November 2018, more than 150 LGBTQ plus candidates got elected to official recognition by the National Park Service. And in May 2019, New York City honored LGBTQ activists Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera with monuments. Next year, a visitor center is set to open at the, National, the Stonewall National Monument and will share the rich history of the Stonewall Inn and its impact on the LGBTQ plus civil rights movement. At the heart of that will be our transgender community's contributions to the launch of those civil rights. This is extremely interesting to me because um, my, both of my trans mothers were actually at Stonewall. And someone I consider very close to me, who happens to be a mentor to me, which is uh, Major, Miss Majors, that's what we always call her. Anyway, she was here for a while and visited us, and we keep in touch constantly. Um, she was there, and she was able to tell me a very, very good account of what actually happened there. One of the most beautiful things about that account that she gave me that isn't commonly known is that in the area of the Stonewall Inn, there were many black bars and Latino bars that were not LGBTQ. And when the riots occurred, they came out and joined the fight against the police. So if we can join together at that moment, at that crucial moment, why can't we join together to fight what's happening now? But, and that's, that's beautiful. And I love that, you know, um, Ms. Major pointed that out and gave you that history. But I mean, we are here and we are trying to move in that space of solidarity. But oftentimes it get missed when we're thinking about trans women of color being at the forefront of that mm -hmm. movement. And I think it's almost like with history, we have to continuously remind our other community members like who was at the forefront. And as we spoke about resources and services, still organizations that are led by trans women of color and that are doing the work in the trans community are still underserved and still don't have the resources that they need when we were on the forefront way back then. So we also have to note that so we can continue to provide that education for community. We'll know that we've been fighting this fight a long time. And not just for ourselves. Exactly. That we actually fought that fight for everyone in the LGBT <clears throat> community. Mm -hmm. And it seems like if you don't, how they say that if you don't know your history, you, you'll you end up repeating it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, you know, that was happening back then. And I, when I think about last night or yesterday at the march, mm -hmm. I, it was just two black trans women. 
<laughs> that were out there in our non-binary friends <laughs> that was that was out there advocating for the community. Yeah, for I was all there. Of us. Yeah. And Morgan. You know, yeah. I, you know what? And Ashley. I just slapped. Uh, I was there. <laughs> but I think it was organized by allies, no? No by the transgender community. No, it was it was actually it was organized by, by allies was organized by allies, to her uh -huh. point, yeah. mm -hmm. and the trans community came in at the end. Mm -hmm. And that allies so don't invite my organization. That. We're going to respect that. that. March. Yeah, so, so to Adriana's point of, you know, when you don't know your history, it's so easy to repeat it. And we are in a state where they are trying to make it really hard for people to know what their history is. They are trying to erase LGBTQ plus history from classrooms. They're trying to erase African American history from classrooms. Mm -hmm. And all of these different histories are American history. America is an incredibly diverse country, and everyone's history is our collective history. So when we erase those histories, exactly, it is so easy to repeat history. And there are a lot of dark, dark things in our history that we do not want to repeat. So it's so important that we fight back against what's going on with them trying to take out what can be taught in our schools, with what teachers can share with their students. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.